Yeah, we've got an Eon 510 input board, comprises of balanced output, a normal jack walks in, and a line in stroke jack um, XLR input differential, or you can put differential jack or single end jack in. Anyway, and you've got your gain switches and different mo mode switches. Got lots of these, um, I think they're JLR chips on this one. The JBL designs use different ones. It's a and MJM4580 op amp chips. They're just two channel split rail plus or minus 12 volt op amp chips uh, used for a preamp and a mixer. And then it splits into two compressors. There's an HF compressor and an earth compressor to condition the signal to suit the cabinet and make the speaker sound as nice as possible without having to have a horrible DSP chip in there, which most of them have got these days, which leads to a real reliability issue anyway on these um get quite a lot of people send these amps in and there's one or two things is they forgot to check you know something they could have done themselves was change the change the input sockets because these sockets especially this one the end of the jack plug can go in there and shove the contacts out and either you get one connect side connecting or you get a short between the differential channels and you get no output from that socket okay now um, so the real purpose of this is this, this is a, um, yeah, it's a new trick, N E U T R I K. It's a new trick one. It's a N C J six F A V dash zero. November Charlie Juliet six, uh, Foxtrot Alpha Victor dash zero. And we're going to change it cause it's got a broken contact in there. There's one of the contacts on the, uh, plug-in jack the xlr contacts are okay but the actual jack contacts aren't working so the amplifier actually blown up so i'm guessing the customer would have known about this before but we found this on test when we were doing the test of the inputs and everything else on the gain test it wasn't working properly and it's because this socket is broken so i'm just going to show you how to change this socket show you how we change this socket so i'll set up and i'll be back in a moment so I've mounted her in the vise. That's the back of the switch. You can see my finger, right? Okay, so what we're going to do is I've got an iron here. It's 90 watt weller, and I've just put a bigger, slightly more substantial tip that's got the capability of delivering a bit more power, a bit more heat to the board. And we're going to use a standard old trick of using some uh, 0.9 millimeter copper wire, this stuff, in a strip. And we're just going to curly whirly around the pins. And then I've got this mounted in the vise so that I can actually get this out. Um, by pulling on the switch underneath, so I've got access to it. Thank you. Keep an eye on that dog. Right, here we go. So let's go straight across up to there and back again. Let's start off with. The name of the game is just to make a heat bar so that you can heat up all these pins and get them all molten at the same time. Uh, you'd be surprised how many of these uh, boards I see that the PCB has been damaged because someone has not done a good job on um, protecting the tracks. They are quite tight on these boards, the holes, unless you've got really good desoldering equipment and a lot of experience, it can be slightly hazardous trying to get it all up in one piece so what you end up with is a bit of um, a copper heat bar going around now i'm going to put a bit of flux on mine you don't have to use a lot of flux but this um the solder i'm using is going to be the cheap old because i need to flood it with solder i'm just going to use some cheap uh chinese solder doesn't smell very nice gonna to have to open the window and probably actually no i should be able to get away without any flux on this one okay let's just give this a go it's going to be smoky but hey man's got to do what a man's got to do there's one outlier there look as well is that part of the switch as well damn it i missed one out hold on yeah clearly you have to make sure you get them all otherwise you won't be successful Uh, 
I don't think a hot air gun would be particularly useful doing this because you'd be scorching everything else. There you go. So all the surface tension the solder will hold all that together. Now I've got to make sure I, I'm doing it from up, not arm's length, but not where I'd like to be. But I suppose it's a good thing because I'm not stuck over the top of it. Just solder that one on there first. Get that in position. Hold it down. Start to do the flood. Keep her going, baby. Some in there. Of course, obviously, when you add the solder, it also helps. So it helps them all to get molten. And you can see now that we're there yet, are we? Are we there yet? I'm not going to put too much pressure on this. Wait for things to take to take their course, basically. I'm still melting over there. We've got one that's fighting me here. There you go. So that's the switch out. And then to remove the solder, obviously, you just get hold of this thing and lift it off. And you can see because those connections are broken, these two are the ones that are broken off. It's actually left them behind, which is quite cool, really. I can just heat those up and pull those out. They're the ones that are broken off inside the inside the unit, inside the connector. There it goes. Yeah, what they're supposed to be on this connect on this part of the spring contact there's supposed to be a hook you can see where it's broken off along that edge there just broken along that edge there i'm not sure how it breaks some sometimes on some cheap jack plugs have you notice that the the end comes off and it kind of drops down you know where the jack is if i can find the uh, where's the test leaf gone don't know where it's gone but the end of the jack with the bobble on the end, the end connection sometimes drops down because it becomes un unfixed at the end. And then when you lift it up, it hooks in that thing and pulls that connector off. Quite common. So the little springy barb that's on there that should be on there isn't. And you can see where it's snapped off. It's snapped off uh, on this side along the edge. All right. So what we're going to do is going to get the mother sucker out. You can see the holes are fairly close to the pin sizes. They're not the easiest ones to to uh, to unsolder. Right, I've clearly got to clean this off with some. Uh, isopropyl alcohol and then solder the new connector in but that's essentially how you do it easy way to unsolder one of these xlr connectors off a mixer board without damaging the mixer board where's the there's the goo where's the toothbrush
There you go. More alcohol just to dissolve the flux that's gone on there. Still got a hole there that needs emptying out. Okay.